So let's keep going with these problems. Uh, these time, this time we're going to be solving equations. Uh, remember that solving an equation means finding a value of the variable that makes it true. Finding a number that you can plug in for x or b or n or whatever that that makes that that makes both numbers equal. So that's how we're going to check is like we did with the previous one, plugging it in, and making sure it works. So uh, this should be from the homework items number four, at least this semester. Uh, that might change in the future. Uh, this is number one. And these start off pretty simple, and we get to some more challenging ones later on. So first thing, let's look at this one. You want to get x by itself. You want to see what is x when x plus 24 is 35. Well, you can subtract 24 from both sides. So you can just see what x is alone after doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. And you'll get x is 24 minus, sorry, 35 minus 24 is 11. Not sure it's really a solution right now. So to check it, that means plug it back in. If we do 11 plus 24, is that equal to... 35 and it is so let's put a box around it that is our checked solution now uh, checking solutions and checking your work in general is i think just as important as being able to do it properly in the first place uh, checking your solution is a really important way to um, one make sure that you know what the question is asking for which is a thing a lot of algebra students have trouble with uh, two it's also just a little bit of extra practice. Uh, and the most important thing about it is that checking your solution means that if you're doing something wrong, you don't keep doing it wrong over and over. You can catch your mistakes so that you can figure out what you're doing wrong uh, before you reinforce those bad habits. And that's a, a really important thing. So let's keep going with part B here. Uh, I'm going to add this one-fourth here because B minus one-fourth plus one-fourth should just cancel out and just leave you with uh, B on this side. And on the other side, doing the same thing to both sides, adding one-fourth. So here we're going to have three-fourths plus one-fourth. And uh, the denominators are the same. They're both 4, so that means it's okay to add these together. You can just do the 3 plus 1, and that is 4 over 4, and that is 1. And by the way, if you just know that 3 fourths plus 1 fourth is 1, you should just do that. You don't really have to show all these steps. I'm just doing it so everybody watching at home who doesn't know how to do that can, can see how to just have a quick reminder of how to add fractions. So we need to check it now. Let's uh, plug in that 1 for b. So it's going to become 1 minus 1 fourth. We want to know is that equal to 3 fourths. Uh, I guess a way you could do this, if you can't just see that it works right away, is just say that 1, to make it so that you can subtract this, 1 is really 4 fourths. So I'm going to replace that 1 with 4 fourths minus one fourth and you get three fourths and four minus one is three so it works okay sounds good uh, now we've got some where there's a few extra steps involved with part c here so let's start by just combining like terms we have uh two terms whoops uh, wrong button there. Uh, two terms with an x here. Uh, we have a 6x and a 5x. So you can do 6x minus 5x. That will become just x. And then the plus 8 plus 16 is plus 24. And on the other side, you just got 32. And then Oh, this looks pretty similar to part A, except we have 32 instead of 35 at this point. Anyway, so let's subtract that 24 from both sides. So you're left with just x on the left side, because x plus 24 minus 24 is just x. 
32 minus 24 is 8. And let's check it. Plugging in x equals 8 like so. And we just need to evaluate this whole left side. Uh, the 6 times 8 is going to be 48 minus 5 times 8. That will become minus 40. The plus 16 is there. We want to see, does this come out to 32? And uh, it does. You can check that. Do that arithmetic yourself if you want, and that's the answer. Okay, uh, let's go on to D here. This time we need to use the distributive rule first because uh, we have this minus 7 here we need to distribute in. Uh, so to keep track of the negative, you might want to think of this as 8C plus negative 7 times the rest of it. That way, it might just help you remember that it's the same thing. Minus 7 and plus negative 7 do the same thing. But that way, you'll remember to distribute the minus in there, which is a, a common mistake. So that will become 8c minus 7c when you distribute that. And then negative 7 times negative 3 becomes plus 21. And that plus is there because we had a minus times a minus in there. And that's still plus 4. And now we can combine some like terms. We have 8c minus 7c. That will become just c plus 21 plus 24 is 25. And when we want the result to be negative 16. Uh, we need to subtract 25 from both sides. And you'll get c is negative 16 minus 25, which should be uh, negative 41. Let's check it. I'll uh, do this while paused so you don't have to watch everything. Actually, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to talk a little bit about calculators and when to use them and when not to use them. Uh, so there's two things to keep in mind, which is that one, you want to get as much basic arithmetic practice as you can. Uh, so for example, if you're doing 8 times negative 41 here, like we need to do, uh, that's a slightly tricky arithmetic thing. Uh, you might not be able to do it in your head. If you, I recommend trying to do it in your head. The way I would do it is 8 times... 4 is 32, that means 8 times 40 is 320, and then, this is just my way of thinking about it, 8 times 40 plus 1 is the same thing, it's going to be 320 plus 8 extra ones left over is 8, and uh, of course it was negative 8, so this whole thing should be negative here, uh, so that becomes negative 328. Now if you try to do that in your head and you get stuck or it, it's just taking you more than like 30 seconds or something, uh, then you should go to a calculator. The other thing I wanted to say is that a calculator is important to know how to use. So uh, it's good to get as much practice with a calculator as you can, but it's also good to get as much practice without a calculator as you can. Um, and it's also good to check your answers. So uh, I recommend trying to do this with a calculator or without a calculator if you can, but then maybe plug it into a calculator again just to get the best kind of practice that you can here. All of the different skills you need, calculator skills and also uh, doing math in your head. So anyways, uh, let's keep going with that concept here. Uh, how do I do negative 41 minus 3, that's just going to be um, negative 44. And 
7 times 44. Let's see, I'm going to think of that as 7 times 4 plus 7 times 40. Uh, so 7 times 40 is 280. 7 times 4 is 28. So that whole thing should come out to be positive 308. And why not check that? And it is. Uh, anyways, I won't bore you with the rest of this. I just wanted to show you what I mean by trying to do it in your head if you can, and then checking with a calculator. It does work. Negative uh, 41 is a solution. And in the future, I'm not going to do too much arithmetic in front of you in the videos. Hopefully, you're getting plenty of practice doing this kind of arithmetic at home on your own. Watching somebody else do this kind of thing is pretty dull. So I'll try to skip when I can that stuff. Uh, so let's go on to part E here. This one, you have multiplication in here. It's negative 9 times x. The thing that will cancel out with that is division. So if you do negative 9 times x divided by negative 9, those are opposites of each other. You just get x left over, uh, but we need to do it on both sides. And so we should get negative 3 checks. And let's go on to f. I like this problem because there's a few different ways to do it. I'll show you uh, a couple of them. One thing is you might say there's an 8 in the denominator. So this is the, the first method I'm going to try. Uh, and when you see that 8 in the denominator, you might say it's divided by 8, so I want to do the opposite of that and multiply it by 8, and that's a fine idea. So let's do that. Then you can see dividing by 8 and multiplying by 8 here should cancel each other out, so you're just left with negative 5x equals 8 times negative 40 is negative 320. Then uh, we're going to need to divide both sides by negative 5 to cancel that out. I'm running out of space here. Uh, because it's multiplied here, so you need to divide by negative 5. And that will cancel out, and you'll just be left with x equals... Uh, uh, I have to think about this one. Sixty-four, uh, and that will be the solution. Um, we'll check it in a minute. So this is method one. The other method I want to try is instead of doing this thing where you start by multiplying by eight and then divide by negative five, you could just multiply both sides by negative 8 over 5 to get both of these things in one step. And that's my preferred way of doing it. Let's see what that looks like here. So a negative number times another negative number, those will cancel out and leave you with a positive. The 8 in the top should cancel out with the 8 in the bottom. The 5 cancels out with the 5. So you should just be left with x. And here, uh, you're going to be left with negative 8 fifths times 40. And that's a good one to do on a calculator. Uh, and that should have been times negative 40. And you get 64, which is the same thing. Let's check that solution. And here's my calculator where I just did negative 5 divided by 8 times 64, and it is negative 40. So it does check. And you got the answer twice, or I got the answer twice, I should say, which is twice as good. It's even better than twice as good as just doing it one way. I'm going to box both of them just to reward myself there. Um, okay, now let's go on to whoops, G here. Uh, 
This time uh, we have two fractions we need to combine first, I think is the best way to do it. Now, to be able to combine these fractions, we need to make them both have the same denominator. And it's possible to make both of these denominators become uh, 8. The way to do that is you can always multiply and divide, or sorry, multiply both sides of a fraction by the same thing, is what I meant to say. For example, 2. So if I want to do 2 times 3 and 2 times 4, that's okay. It would basically just cancel out. It would give you 6 over 8, which is the same thing as 3 over 4. Um, and that makes both of the denominators equal to 8. So we can write this as 7 over 8n minus 6 over 8 and this one we just modified, and then 9 plus 2 is 11. That way we can see 7 eighths times n minus 6 eighths times n. Those are like terms because they both have an n. They're like fractions because of the 8. So that means we can just do 7 minus 6, and you get 1 over 8 times n equals 11. Multiply both sides by 8, and n should be 88. Let's check that. So to check this, you could try to do as much of the arithmetic in your head as you can. But another good way to get a useful skill out of this class is Practice entering things, a, a long, complicated expression into your calculator. This is actually an important skill. Why? Because plugging in long, complicated instructions into a calculator like this, it's basically the same thing as computer programming. Uh, computer software uses the same kind of syntax as this with parentheses and uh, orders of operations. I don't mean software, I mean uh, computer code. Uh, and and th there's just a, a lot of jobs nowadays where you're going to need to have some kind of computer human interaction where you have to enter in complicated stuff like this. Uh, not that you I mean, you might be a, a programmer. You never know where you're going to be in the future. Um, or you might just be something like, I don't know, a machinist. CNC machinists nowadays need to do basic computer programming where they enter in complicated expressions like this. Uh, or maybe you're going to be a nurse. I don't know. I can imagine nurses need to enter in patients' information into computers. Um, maybe they need to use calculators sometimes to calculate dosages, that kind of thing. I don't know. Uh, anyways. I have the parentheses matched up here. Everything should work out. It comes out to be 11. That's the same thing as 9 plus 2. So that checks. And there's that. OK, let's go on to this last one here, h, where uh, we need to start by distributing the negative 10 in there. Like so. Then negative 40 minus 19, those are both negative, so you'll get a bigger negative number, negative 59. Add the 59 to both sides. And we'll be left with negative 10x equals... 144, I think. Yeah. And then we can divide both sides of that by negative 10 to cancel out this multiplication. And we'll get x is negative uh, 14.4. Let's check that again. I'll just do this one. It is good to do it by hand if you can. Um, but it's also good to get practice writing big, messy expressions like this into your calculator. So we're going to take that negative 10 times x, which is now negative 14.4 plus 4 minus 19. Oh, whoops. I needed to write. See, I need to practice this a little bit myself. I forgot to write the times, negative 10 times that negative 14 plus 4. 
that becomes 85, so we're good. That is the solution. And there is that check done by hand also, uh, which you need to show on tests and stuff. Okay, so let's look at number two now. Uh, there's a couple ways to deal with this negative here. You could just start by distributing it in, that's one way, or you could multiply by both, both sides by negative one first. Uh, the way to cancel out a negative sign in general is to multiply both sides by negative one or divide by negative one. It does exactly the same thing, like so. So the negative here, negative one times this negative leaves you with a positive thing. And uh, you just have one times w minus 12, which is just w minus 12. 30 times negative one is negative 30. Then we can add the 12 to both sides. And w minus 12 plus 12 is 0, or it's just w plus 0. Negative 30 plus 12 is negative 18. Let's check that. Check. So let's have a box around it. Uh, b here, you could divide both sides by 5 first, or you could just distribute the 5 in. Uh, let's try distributing the 5 in. So 5 times 8 is 40, plus 5 times 6 is 30p. That's still equal to 0. Now we want to get the uh, p by itself. I'll subtract 40 from both sides. You end up with 30p equals negative 40, because 0 minus 40 is negative 40. Then uh, we want to cancel out the multiplication by 30 to get p by itself. And that's going to be p equals negative 40 over 30. You can reduce that to just be negative 4 thirds. Oh, I put a box around it sooner than I should have. Let's check it first by plugging it into the original equation. The left side comes out to 0, 2, so that means p makes the equation true when you plug it in. That negative 4 thirds does. OK, I've uh, got a few more here. Uh, remember when you have minus a thing in parentheses like this, it's the same thing as subtracting each of the two terms. So you basically have to distribute the subtraction through the terms. So this will look like 5 minus n and then minus negative 1. Be uh, this negative 1 is because this was negative. The minus, the other minus is from there. So that minus negative 1 becomes plus 1, and you have 5 plus 1 is 6. Let's subtract the 6 from both sides. That leaves you with negative n, don't forget that negative there, uh, equals 13. Then to get n by itself, we can multiply both sides of this by negative 1. And negative 1 times n is just n, and 13 times negative 1 is negative 13. Let's check it. That checks out. So we got a box around it. Let's go on to this next one. Uh, this one is going to take a few more steps. Uh, if we have w over here and also w over here, uh, then we want to get both of them on one side somehow. And you can take it to whichever side you like. Uh, let's maybe just do minus w from both sides, get it all on the left side. doesn't really matter. So we're going to be left with 1 third minus w. Now to combine those two, when one is a fraction and one is just w, we're going to need to do, I'll write it over here on the side so I can think about it, 1 third w minus just 1 w. We need to take that w and rewrite it so that it has a 3 in the denominator. 
right now it's just one W, like just minus W is the same thing as the number one. And the number one is the same thing as three thirds W. So that, so that minus W becomes minus three thirds W. So you have one third W minus three thirds is negative two thirds. So that's going to look like this. And then let's subtract the five fourths from both sides. And so we have minus two thirds W equals, hmm. So these fractions have the same denominator here. They're both divided by four. So you have negative one fourth minus five fourths gives you negative six fourths. Okay, so now my favorite way to cancel out this negative two-thirds here is going to be the same thing we did with a previous problem up here, number G from number one here, where, whoops, where did it go here, where, uh-oh, my computer is freaking out a little bit, not G, I'm an F where you just multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the 5 eighths, which I did as negative 8 fifths there. So let's do that here. That's going to be negative 3 over 2. On both sides. And uh, 3 in the numerator times a fraction with 3 in the bottom cancels out. The negative and negative cancels out. The 2's cancel out. You just get W. And over here, when you have a fraction times a fraction, we could multiply across to see what you get. Uh, negative 6 times negative 3 is 18. 4 times 2 is 8. That will reduce to 18 over 8 is 9 fourths which you could also write as 2.25 if you prefer. Let's check it. Looks like that works. Okay, let's keep going to part E. With this one, I'm going to cancel out the 3 fifths first by multiplying both sides by, uh, by 5 thirds, like so. So the 5s cancel out and the 3s cancel out. The same thing to the other side. Uh, that will leave you with just the 10x minus 5 equals, you can do 27 divided by 3 is 9. 9 times 5 is 45. Then let's add the 5 to both sides. Uh, we'll get 10x equals 50. Let's divide both sides by 10. To cancel out that 10, because times 10 divided by 10 gives you just x. 50 over 10 is 5. Let's check that answer now. And that works. Okay, with this one, uh, part F here, the, uh, let me leave that check there so you can see it. Um, the biggest mistake people might make is doing x minus 7x, because those are sort of like like terms, except the problem is you'd be breaking the rules for the order of operations uh, because there's this multiplication here that needs to happen before we can do that subtraction. So uh, let's do that multiplication first. Distribute the 8 in there. So you'll get 8x minus 32 minus 7x equals 14. Then we can do the 8x minus 7x, which is x. Let's add 32 to both sides. We see with x is 46. Let's check that. And that all worked out. So 46 is the solution to that one. Got two more. I'm trying to leave a little bit more space for these. So here's g first. 
Now, this one I'm going to do a little bit differently. With the previous one, I canceled out the fraction first. That's fine. Uh, but if you know that the fraction is going to cancel out anyways, you don't really have to get rid of it first. We could start by just uh, distributing it. Wait, what did I do here? Oh, I distributed with that one. And with part E, I canceled out that fraction first. Uh, with part E, like what, I, what I'm saying here is we could have done 3 fifths times 10x and 3 fifths times negative 5 uh, instead of canceling it out first. And we'll, we'll do that process here with G. So we're going to do 2 thirds times 9, 2 thirds times negative 3. Uh, so that way we can reduce the the nine in the top and the three in the bottom that just leaves you with three whoops So this should become uh, 2 times 3 is 6c. And this one's just going to be minus 2. Uh, now you can add the 2 to both sides. Divide everything by 6. And that should give you c equals 4. Let's check that. It checks. Okay, uh, with this one, I see fractions on both sides of the equation here. Uh, there's a divided by 3 on the left and a divided by 6 on the right. Uh, let's just try to, to get x by itself. Maybe let's just not clear the 6. Let's just multiply both sides by 3. Uh, so we're going to do 3 on the left. Multiply this by 3 as well. Uh, because the 3 times 1 third is just 1, so you end up with just 1 times x minus 5. Uh, the, six, the, the 6 in the denominator there, you can think of as 2 times 3, so that you can see how it will cancel out. Uh, the 3 in the bottom cancels out, leaves you with a 2 left over, so you can write this whole thing as x minus 5 equals 5 over 2. Uh, then we can add the 5 to both sides. That should end up looking like x equals uh, 5 over 2 plus 5. Let's think about that for a second. Uh, we can't just add these together because 1 is 5 halves and 1 is just five ones, so we need to take that five and write it as something divided by two. Uh, so what would go here so that when you have divided by two, you get five, that should be 10. So that gives you 15 over two. Also known as 7.5. Either one is fine, both is even better. Uh, let's plug it in to check, and it checks. Uh, again, if you're struggling with these, if you're getting very many of these wrong on your own, you probably need to get some more practice, because this kind of thing forms like the basic skills that we're going to use throughout the semester. Almost every single section is going to have problems kind of like this, where you have to solve some kind of basic equation here using the four basic operations like plus, minus, times, divides. Uh, you're going to have to deal with fractions, negative numbers, stuff like this throughout the course. So if you're struggling with these, I recommend getting as much extra practice as you can. Uh, it will help if you do it in the beginning, of course, so you don't get further and further behind as we go on. And I'll include a link to uh, some good problems on Khan Academy uh, that you can do as much of you want as to your heart's delight uh, in the, the notes under the video. And I'll see you in class. Have a good day.